Hello, everyone. Pavel Kosenko, the CEO of Dehancer, is here. This is the third part of my lecture, How to See Color. Today, we'll talk about color harmony. If you haven't watched the first two videos, I recommend starting with them. Links can be found in the comments. This video is the continuation of the lecture. All three parts were prepared by me and represent a complete theory of color. When talking about color harmony, most often the color wheel is in the spotlight. It is believed that harmonious colors are supposedly located on this circle in a special way. In fact, this is not true. The thing is, the color wheel is a flat model, and we already know that the color gamut is a three-dimensional model. Meaning, all the variety of colors that a human is able to perceive cannot be placed on the color wheel which means that it doesn't allow us to talk about the relationship between these colors. The misconceptions associated with the color wheel have arisen from the incorrect interpretation of the wording used by the artist, teacher, and writer Johannes Itten in his book The Art of Color. The main misconception is as follows. It is generally accepted that if the colors located on the wheel balance each other out and add up to a neutral color, then they are harmonious. For example, these colors are supposedly harmonious, or these, or these, or these, and in general, any colors that add up to a neutral gray. At the same time, it turns out that these colors are allegedly not harmonious, or these, or, say, these, because they don't balance each other out. In fact, everything is much easier. Let's consider a specific example. A photograph of Ilya Valamov, which he kindly allowed me to use for the demonstration. This image contains a large number of bright saturated colors from different parts of the color wheel at the same time. I claim that these colors are disharmonious, although if we reduce the photo to a size of one by one pixel and thereby average the color, then this pixel will turn out to be almost perfectly gray. This means that all the colors in this image balance each other out. That is, they are supposedly harmonious. In fact, this photo can hardly be considered as harmonious in color. It is full of all the shades of the rainbow. The colors are too saturated. There are too many of them, and they are not variable. I call such a coloristic solution color cacophony. Now let's process this snapshot in a certain way. It doesn't matter how I did it. We'll talk about it later. The important thing is that now the colors look much more harmonious. Although at first glance it seems that the color became too faded, inconspicuous, inexpressive. However, if you look at this one for 5 to 10 seconds and then suddenly switch to the original one, you will most likely agree that it is difficult to call it harmonious. It turns out that the theory of colors does not work very well. This means that we cannot use the color wheel model to talk about the harmony or disharmony of color ratios. What is the color harmony then? Let me share my own observations and thoughts on this topic. Let's do some visual experiments. For that, we will take any palette of various and at the same time bright saturated colors. For example, this one, consisting of 12 colors. This palette can be more or a little less wide, it doesn't matter. For the experiment, 12 colors will be enough. I deliberately arranged them in the form of a rectangle so that you do not have associations with the color wheel. Looking at this palette, I claim that it is disharmonious. The colors are too saturated, there are too many of them, and they have nothing in common. If we were talking about music, such a palette could be compared with simultaneously and loudly extracted sounds of the entire octave of a piano from DO to C, including all white and all black keys. In both cases, we are dealing with cacophony. But if you take any two colors from our palette, then their combination will look quite harmonious. Besides, regardless of whether these are neighboring colors or not, whether they are warm or cold, contrasting or not. Any two colors look harmonious, just like any two notes played on the piano are harmonious.
Even such tense intervals as a minor second or tritone still sound quite harmonious because we clearly hear both sounds in them. Such a combination can hardly be called a cacophony. Harmonizing three notes is a little more complicated, but almost all triads will still sound quite harmonious. Although some triads might sound too tense. Harmonizing four notes is even more difficult. To do so, there are already certain rules for constructing seventh chords. It is curious that in music it is extremely rare to find chords consisting of more than four sounds of different pitches. And regarding eleventh chord and thirteenth chord, which consist of six and seven notes, in encyclopedias you can often find a following remark. These chords are never played simultaneously due to their dissonant character, or it's rare and not used due to their dissonance. Of course, this does not mean that musical compositions consist of a maximum of four notes, and pictures are painted with no more than four colors, but it is really difficult for a human to simultaneously perceive polyphony of more than four notes, and you can rarely find a painting using all colors at once. Usually, the color scheme of a canvas is based on some color accents and a few primary colors. The color variety is achieved not by incorporating all sorts of different colors, but by incorporating the large number of their gradations. Simply put, by the color variability. An interesting example is described in the book Color and Contrast, Technology and Creative Choice, written by a cameraman, Valentin Zelezhnyakov. In June 1985, the State Hermitage Museum almost lost an amazing artwork by Rembrandt, Danae. Colorimetric analysis that was performed during the restoration works on the painting revealed that Rembrandt had only used a few colors, but their distribution on the canvas was astonishing in its intricacy. That is, all that chromatic and tonal richness that we can perceive when we look at this painting is the result of skillful combination of base colors that are by no means exotic. Another curious example is an anecdote shared by the remarkable contemporary artist Alexander Zavarin. As a student of Stroganov Academy of Art, I wasn't very keen on painting. To be honest, I wasn't very good at it either, so I shared my concerns with a friend who related a practical advice which he, in his turn, had heard from an old artist and a friend of his. The idea was to get rid of all the colours, leave only red ochre, yellow ochre, white and black, and use these four colours for everything – landscapes, portraits, still life, you name it. I did that and got my first A in a fine art class. This is how I really learned to see the colour. I introduced the other colours back, with time, but I still prefer moderation when it comes to palettes. Here is the very first student work of the artist, for which he received an A. Only two paints are used here, namely white and black. But what if we are dealing with an initially large number of colours? How to make it harmonious? It is important to understand that the key problem of the disharmony of a large number of saturated colours is the lack of coherence. Here, the only way to make their combination harmonious is to somehow bring the colours closer to each other. The easiest way to do so is to lower the saturation, as if you were adding grey paint to each colour. Let's do this for our experimental palette. In this case, I've reduced its saturation by about 30%. At first glance, the palette has become too faded and inexpressive, but we have done this experiment many times. In the same way as in all previous examples, wait 5 to 10 seconds and quickly switch to the original version. Now you can clearly see that the original colors are really dissonant with each other. Surprisingly enough, simply lowering the saturation makes the colors more harmonious. At its limits, it leads to a black and white image, which is always harmonious from the point of view of color combinations. But this is not the only way of harmonization. Let's make it a little more complicated and try to harmonize the colors without decreasing their saturation too much. 
To do so, we won't use a grey paint to muddy up, meaning bring together the colours, but some other paint, for example, yellow. In my experience, adding warm tints to an image is beneficial to its perception. Many of you will agree that this option looks much more harmonious. At the same time, the palette is now perceived as quite naturally saturated. However, if we do this trick with a real image, then the harmonizing shade will be perceived as an even off shade, which we would be tempted to brush off the image. Practice shows that the viewer does not get such a feeling if the so-called benchmarking neutrals are obvious in an image with distorted but harmonized colors. That is, if the objects that we expect to see neutral look neutral, then usually we subconsciously believe in such a color scheme, no matter how realistic it is. Let's look at an example. Here is a photograph of Alfred Palmer, taken in 1942. This image is somewhat a deception. Let me explain why. This is an advertising photo taken as a part of the propaganda of the US military power against Nazi Germany. We see the workers of a military aircraft production plant. Pay attention to the manicure and makeup. Obviously, these were done specifically for the photo shoot and not before the start of the actual work shift. Deception? Of course, but without any doubt beneficial for the perception. Check out the professionally staged lighting. Deception? Of course. In reality, such a light would be directed to the face and interfere with work. Besides, this shot was taken on Kodachrome film, which greatly distorts, and at the same time harmonizes, the colors. Meaning, the very fact of shooting on film, and especially on such a film, is a deception in its purest form in terms of color rendering. Nevertheless, you and I believe this photo, for several reasons. The main ones are as follows. 1. Natural skin tones. This is really very important for our perception no matter how distorted the colors are, but if skin tones are perceived as natural, we tend to believe any deception. 2. Presence of neutral hues on objects that we would expect to be neutral. In this case, these are a. Neutral black background b. Relatively neutral gray metal c. And most importantly, the neutral white collar of the blouse of one of the workers. In addition, it does not really matter what color this blouse was. It could be blue, yellow, pink, or any other color. For perception, it is only important what the viewer expects to see, and he expects to see it white. Therefore, the white blouse, together with the rest of the benchmarking neutrals, makes the viewer believe in the genuineness of the color scheme of this photo, despite the fact that the colors are distorted here for the benefit of the viewer's perception. In order to see how important the role of the white blouse is, let's paint it in a color that matches the overall warm tone of the photo, that is, yellow. In fact, the blouse could well have been that color. But this is completely unimportant from the perception point of view, because this way, the photo is perceived as if it has an off shade that you'd want to brush off. And as soon as the blouse becomes the expected neutral color, the feeling of an off shade disappears and we again find ourselves believing these deliberately distorted but harmonious colors. To sum up, color scheme harmonization comes down to one of these two ways. 1. Lowering the saturation of all colors. 2. Bringing a large number of originally saturated colors closer together by muddying them up and or mixing them with each other. Of course, it is possible and often necessary to use both methods at the same time. There are no other ways to harmonize color. Since in both cases the original color is distorted, benchmarking neutrals play an important role for the viewer's authentic perception. I believe that this is where color theory can be concluded. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Dehancer channel. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.